have we got any questions from last week's work at all? Nope. Okay, sweet. So we'll just move on to this week's. Um, I'll start with lesson three's work as it's really short and sweet and simple. So in lesson three, what you guys are going to do is you're going to look at the re-aim framework. You're going to watch one video. It's about five minutes long. Um, and then you're just going to literally give us some um, information in your OneNote. Just write it straight into your OneNote on re-aim. So if you remember how last time we looked at the Ottawa Charter and I got you to put the Ottawa Charter, the five areas and the health promotion side of things into your own words, same thing with re-aim. So for the R, the E, the A, the I and the M, I just want you in that last lesson, in lesson three this week, pretty much just putting re-aim into your own words and defining what each uh, letter stands for and is required to do um, from that's pretty simple so that's literally just a an overview of potentially what we're going to look at next week in terms of re-aim so just a quick little intro to that in lesson three but the main thing that we are going to look at this week is um you guys are hopefully going to complete this action plan that i'm hopefully sharing with you all that you can see right now um, this is pretty much if done um, efficiently and effectively going to be um, most of your action plan part of your assessment um, the significant part about this is that if you do this really well and find some really good data um, more than half of your action plan of your assessment will be written for you and it will make it super simple and it's broken down to an easy understanding but really the idea of this scaffold is to create an action plan for you guys to implement for the following week to provide and find some more primary data. So at the start of the term, we obviously found some primary data on your moods and um, some barriers and enablers. What's gonna happen is once you complete this action plan, you are going to do the mood tracker again with the resource that you are implementing from this action plan. Now, the idea is that the resource ideally helps you um, improve your mental health or improve some barriers that you have going on in your lives currently um, but that might not be the case so that could happen to change um, but yeah that's the that's the idea is that the resource that you're implementing um, helps your barriers and therefore to justify that in your report you need primary data so you'll need to complete the mood tracker again but I'll go through that a little bit later but if we look at the action plan um, we'll go through what you got to do and we'll look at my example to match. Hopefully it'll make a bit of sense. But in the first column, so when we're looking at this column here, what I want you guys to do is I want you to identify the barriers that you found in your river of life. Um, so they might be stress, that might be um, uh, issues with your social life due to the fact you can't see people, whatever they are. Um, I want you to identify those and put them in this column. Then what I want you to do is I want you to identify where on your determinant of health scale does that connect to. So if it's stress, and we look at my example here, so stress from my workload falls under the socioeconomic characteristic, but it also can fall under health behaviours. So stress itself falls under health behaviours in our determinants of health, but then employment falls under the socioeconomic characteristics part of our determinants of health. So you're connecting your barrier. So my two barriers in this example are stress and employment, and you're connecting it to where on the determinants of health framework scale does it sit. All right, once you do that for all of your barriers from your um, river of life, you're then gonna tell me which um, are the overarching determinants of health um, that affect you. So you'll find that potentially you might have a lot of things that are impacting your social um, sort of setting at the moment. So that would fall under um, socioeconomic characteristics or broad features of society. And you are just really connecting and telling me which ones are your most significant determinants of health. So if you've got three that are fitting under socioeconomic characteristics and only one under health behaviours, just give me your socioeconomic characteristics. So just give me the ones that are having a significant impact. So there's more than one barrier in your life that falls under that category. Now, if this is done effectively, you will have, um, you should have probably about two, 
and most of the time the two will be very similar to each other's. All right, now moving on to the second column, so resource. What I want you to do is from last week's template where you analyzed seven different resources, you are picking one of those and you are going to apply it to yourself now in your action plan. So you need to pick the one that you are most likely going to use and you also think potentially will have an impact to your barriers found. So make sure it's significantly important that you guys are picking one that you will actually use. There's no point picking a resource that you're gonna to forget to do every day. You'll need to do this for one week and one week only so that you can get some primary data out of it. But other than that, that's all you need to do. But please make sure you're picking an app or a online website or a hotline or something that you're actually going to use. All right, then moving on into the next column, who, when, and how. This is just you guys being very explicit on how you're actually going to use the resource. So if we look at my example, um, I'm just saying that I'm gonna download the app I'm going to be using it on myself and I'm going to do it every time before I go to bed and I'm going to set an alarm to make sure that I actually use it. Simple, extremely explicit. The only reason I want this in here is I want you guys to be holding yourselves accountable to actually doing it because if you don't do it, you won't get any data out of it and there's no point. The whole point of creating this is so that you guys can get some data out of this to figure out whether the resource you selected was actually beneficial or if it had no impact whatsoever. All right, now, moving into the last two columns, these are our important um, columns for your assessment. So if you, look at your, if you were to look at your scaffolding right now, you need to make sure that you're connecting to your Ottawa Charter, and you also need to make sure that um, it fixes the identified barriers. So, with these two columns in our assessments from last term, generally um, we probably weren't great at making sure we hit every part of the criteria and that had a significant impact on some people's marks in terms of the fact that if you don't, like I told you guys last time, if you didn't speak about the Ottawa Charter at all, you could only get an E. And then if you briefly speak about it and you mention, oh yep, yeah, it connects to this part, you could only get a D. So there was a lot of people who really struggled in connecting, but also justifying um, which part it connects to. So hopefully by doing this, the why and the secondary data columns, you'll be able to connect and find justification before you even start writing, which will hopefully allow you guys to get a better mark on your assessment. Now, for the why, you need to make sure that you're connecting to the Ottawa Charter, developing personal skills, which we're all aware, if you're not a new student to health, is about education. So making sure that your resource that you're implementing is educating you in some way, shape or form. All right. And then you also need to explain how that education process would help fix your identified barriers. So if we look at my example, I say, I'm implementing this resource to help adjust my identified barriers, stress and employment. The Calm app helps provide myself with tools to educate on relaxing my body, enhancing my mood and reducing my stress levels. This is done by guiding me through meditation techniques with relaxation music and bedtime stories. So I'm explaining what the app does first and foremost. And then secondly, I'm connecting to both my barriers because I'm saying that the app itself will reduce my stress, it'll enhance my mood, etc. But then I'm also saying that it will provide myself education and guidance on how to complete it. So can you see how it connects to both? Hopefully you guys can see that. And then when I go into my secondary data points here in this final column, the significant part here is again, you need to make sure if you want a really good mark or you just want a C, let's be honest, you need to make sure that you are finding two separate pieces of data that help justify what you are saying in your why. None of us are professionals in this area where we know exactly how things are going to affect our mental health or how they improve us or whatnot. So we need to go find somebody who is a professional to back up what we're saying. 
Some of you guys did this really well last term. Some of you really struggled. So hopefully this makes this a little bit easier. But if we look at my two examples I have here, I've gone, meditation is a simple technique that if practiced for as few as 10 minutes each day can help you control stress, decrease anxiety, improve cardiovascular health, and achieve a greater capacity for relaxation. So that's that example there or that um, source is connecting to my identified barriers because it's talking about what the benefits of, of um, meditation are. So if I do meditation, it would fix these barriers that I've got, which is stress. And as you can see, stress and relaxation are in that um, quote. And then if we go down to my second second quote that I've got here, my second resource, I'm now connecting to the Ottawa Charter and the developing personal areas because I'm speaking about how education within um, meditation will be effective for me. Where it says, training our bodies on a daily basis to achieve this state of relaxation can lead to enhanced mood, lower blood pressure, improved digestion, and a reduction of everyday stress. So again, I've got a connection here to my barrier in stress and training, which is another word for educating or improving. I'm talking about improving myself and the meditation process. All right, now this scaffold looks scary like this, but when you break it down and do it, it shouldn't take you too long at all. Um, the most important thing though, is you try and get this done quickly because you need to start getting some primary data. So once this is done, this action plan what i need you guys to do from there is i need you to um, start implementing so you need to implement for at least a week and you will utilize the mood tracker that you used in week one and week two to um, record more data whilst you're using the resource so you'll have to do another mood tracker pretty much with yourselves using the resource and potentially writing information down from the resource, whether it was successful or not, you believe at the time. Now, the reason for that is, is so you've got some primary data at the end of your report to say, yep, it worked, yes, it didn't, or no, it didn't, sorry, and then go from there. Now, I know that's a lot of information in a very short amount of time. Um, it also looks like a lot of work, but I promise you it isn't. Does anyone have any questions? All right, so most important thing for this week is try and get that action plan done ASAP using a resource that you will use. Please don't pick a resource that you're not going to use. There's no point. Um, otherwise, you're just hurting yourselves. And then, like usual, if you have any questions or you need any help, I'm available via email. All right, thanks, guys. Have a great day.